When I wrote these, it was like right on that cusp. I knew I needed more. I knew I needed help managing my mind. And you'll hear that here. So I'm going to read the first one. And the first one is a recollection, maybe a year later of this time with my daughter. My daughter came to me one Thursday afternoon and told me that the next day was Pioneer Day at school. They were to dress up as pilgrims who would be having an event that morning. Oh my gosh, tomorrow. I asked, half panicky, stress you or not, I was more than happy to do it for her, being that I already shared so many responsibilities with somebody else. And that someone else had no interest in working as a team or even communicating for my daughter's sake, which is, of course, why I hadn't heard about this event sooner. I felt honored to make my daughter's extras for school. In the years before, while packing her lunch, I would use cookie cutters to make her sandwiches into cute shapes. One winter day, while placing a drop of red food dye on the tip of her sandwich to signify Rudolph's nose, I thought, this can't be good for her. <laughs> so from then on, I began drawing on the outside of my daughter's sandwich bags. It started with simple little snowmen, and two years later, I was drawing Katy Perry, Willie Nelson, and Elsa from Frozen. It was loads of fun, and it was a great way to help sink in the little things she was learning also. For a brownies field trip, we were headed to the fire station. So that morning, I drew a little girl in a fireman's uniform to remind her. When she began reading, I'd draw little conversation bubbles above the sketched Little List Pet Shop characters who were asking her to eat all of her sandwich before delving into the cookies I hid under the bag of apples. For the following day, I borrowed my neighbor's sewing machine and got to work. She needed to look like a pilgrim, maybe a bonnet or a long skirt, she said. With some leftover material I had from some pillows I never finished. <laughs> Imagine that. I decided to make her a long apron and a bonnet, both with big old colorful bows, which clearly didn't fall in line with the muted colors worn back in the 1800s, but it looked so dang cute. The next morning, I dropped her off at school and decided to hang out in nearby Starbucks until the square dance at 10 a.m. Parents were welcome to attend, and I was excited to be there for her. I walked into the gymnasium around 9.50 and decided to sit on the bleachers to wait. Other parents began to trickle in, and soon Scarlett and the rest of her class filed in also. There were about six classrooms in all, along with their choreographed square dance. This was an opportunity for all the kiddos to group teach their parents as well. When they announced for moms and dads to join in, I started over to Scarlett, and then I saw a blur. Her stepmother swooped in, not more than two feet from me. She grabbed my daughter by the arm and pulled her to the floor. I was shocked. My eyes saucers, my jaw to the floor. I watched her smirk and loudly snark. You can have her after my turn. I swear my jaw was still on the floor when I looked over at Miss Halpern, my daughter's teacher, to see if it was real. Was anyone else reacting to this or was I just having a daymare? As I've explained, I'm not a confrontational person. Plot me in the middle of a head-to-head -head competition and I am out. By nature, I freeze. Now, we all know that it's not really by nature. It just happened to be that I was in that extended freeze state, right? On the inside, though, I was ready to blow a fucking gasket. Not only was it my day with Scarlett per the custody agreement, but I just made her this cute little outfit and I watched her stepmom tie the bow on her as if she was claiming it to be her own. I stood there in the middle of the floor, dumbfounded and, well, feeling dumb. The children and their parents began to dance all around me. Not wanting to make any sort of scene for Scarlett, I slinked off to the bleachers. Her teacher glanced over and quietly mouthed, I'm so sorry this was happening to you. The stepmom made overly big gestures while doing her dance and did not let go of my daughter for the entire event. I quietly left, praying that miraculously this would not be a memory that stuck for my daughter. My heart ached inside. My stomach did flips. I hated that this was happening. I hated it for me because it felt so incredibly dark and ugly, but mostly I hated it for my daughter. The fact that my sweet little girl was being made to choose, that she had to feel that unnecessary and twisted tension created over her, it made me sick. I'd obviously seen her in actions many times before, I'm talking about the stepmother, but to witness her act this way at a school event was just unbelievable. Soul crushing, really. Which I don't know why I'm so surprised looking back on this now. I don't know why I'm so surprised because there were so many other school events starting from when she started school, right, in kindergarten, where she did such similar things to this. She would make a huge scene in an even more confined space like my daughter's kindergarten room and first grade room, you know? Anyway, so what stood out to me for this one is that I think we all as alienated parents have done this. We have sacrificed and kept quiet 
in order to hopefully save our children so that we didn't make a scene in front of them. You know, just like I said, praying to God that this memory didn't stick for her. That is all that mattered to me. I, when I was on those bleachers that day, or b before I was on those bleachers and I was standing there getting ready to go do this silly little square dance with my daughter, I, and as I saw the blur and her swoop scarlet up and the look on the stepmom's face, she was like, you can have her after I'm finished. It felt so evil and dark to me. I was so like appalled. I, I, I was frozen. I was truly frozen. I did not know how to act because who does this, right? That's where I was. What adult behaves this way? Whenever at first, whenever the stepmom came into the picture and I didn't know who she was and I didn't, I knew nothing about her really, I was convinced she must not have had a kid ever because having a kid, she would know that there's like a, a code, right? We don't, you don't do that with someone else's kid. You don't cut someone else's kid's hair, their bangs, when they've never had their bangs cut, coming to find out that she did have a child. And most people don't do those things. But there are those people, my daughter's stepmom, who does do those things. But I did not know how to respond to it. And I think so many of us can relate to this, especially if there's a stepmom, I'm going to generalize here, but I'm pretty sure I'm accurate on this, in the picture who was actively alienating, working to alienate. I know that you understand this. And even if there's not a step parent in the picture, moms and dads alike will behave this way with the kids. When they're doing the acts to alienate, they're not operating on the same principles that we would like other people to. So anyway, I thought it was important to point out if you're in it actively right now, the one thing, if I could go back and change anything today, it would definitely be my reactions in those moments. I would speak up. I would not worry so much about how it might affect my daughter if I stood up for myself and for her. Back then, I felt like I didn't want to make a peep. I didn't want to make a sound because I didn't want to be the one causing the scene or contributing to the dysfunction. But when it comes to situations like ours, speaking up, knowing your worth, you absolutely have the right and the responsibility, really, to stand up for what you believe for yourself and for your kiddo. I'm not saying that you need to fight the other people back, but you can certainly fight for your child. Of course, hindsight's 2020 because I know now too that I did not know my own worth back then. We're all worthy. We don't gain our worth at any time. Like you are so worthy right now as you listen to me, right? Or watch whatever you're doing. There is nothing that can make you more worthy. And if I knew that then, like truly knew it, then I probably would have stood up for myself more. I didn't trust what I was thinking and observing was actually happening or that my judgment was on point, you know? And so I wanted to keep quiet and I was, because of the discord, I am sure you guys understand this and relate to this. Um, and I think this is what all of us as alienated parents do. We all think like, oh God, please, I just don't want to add to the situation which is a healthy way, I think, to, to approach pretty much any other situation besides something like alienation. You know, pick your battles and just walk away from somebody that's acting not appropriately, dysfunctionally. But when it comes to our children, I think if I could offer anything today, it would be to stand up, stand up, don't sit quiet. Don't tell yourself, don't believe the story that it's going to get better later that if you just stay quiet for long enough, they'll stop. Your children will see that you are the same one. I would today say that there is definitely a way. It doesn't have to be so black or white. You can actually stand like in your power, stand up for yourself and advocate for yourself and your child in an effective way, in uh, a powerful or empowered way without having to add to the dysfunction. You know what I'm saying? There is an in-between. I think we think that if we say something, that we're just going to be at their level. And that's not true. It doesn't have to be like that. Like in this situation, for me, I could imagine that today, if that happened, I would absolutely stand in between and say, hi, <laughs> this is actually, now I'm going to take my daughter and spend some time with her here. 
It doesn't have to be yelling. It doesn't have to be screaming. It doesn't have to go stoop to anybody's level. There is a way to to act on the behalf and the best interest of our children without doing that. Anyway, okay. So I just thought that maybe some of you guys, many of you guys would identify with that. I know that we will all face situations again where we need to act, advocate for ourselves and maybe still our children, you know? And so this time, just remind yourself that you may feel scared at the moment, but it's going to be okay. And that so long as you are acting, coming from a place of love and kindness, even in being firm and convicted in what you want to say, that you cannot go wrong. 